Good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the great state of Maine. <laughs> well, most of the ice in this state is gone. <laughs> the lake I live on is wide open. And so is the stream, wide open. So we're working on outboard motors. And for those of you that have been following the Fun With Fire series, we're not done with that yet either. <laughs> We've just taken a little bit of a detour for a, a couple of videos, I guess, so that I can work on these motors. I am trying. I've got an old beater boat down back that I want to put down by the swamp. Uh, big one. I, it was actually given to me, 16-foot aluminum boat. Well, really, really old, but anyways, beside the point. My plan was to bring that over to Beaver Creek, and a tree fell on it. So now it's going to stay here and be a swamp boat. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it, other than it's got a dent up on the up on the gunnel, but no big deal. But anyways, <laughs> following up on the 1974 Evinrood motor. First Evan Rood I've ever had. <laughs> Enos, Enos, hello Enos. I've always had Johnson motors. Every motor I own is a Johnson. This is the first Enos. Uh, this is the first Evan Rood that's come here. I still don't think there's much wrong with this motor, but I'm going to have to bypass it for a little while. We're going to pick on this one now. <laughs> I don't have any spark. I took the flywheel off. Somebody's been in there and replaced, looks like the points and all of that, but I still can't get any spark. So for now, I'm going to set this one aside. I don't have any spark, so that means I can't, uh, I know the carburetor would need to be rebuilt anyways, setting that long. So have yourself a sip of coffee. As I said in those other videos, I had four or five other motors up in the shed. Well, I went and dragged all four of them down here. This one appears to be the one that's most complete. <laughs> so, the other two look like uh, parts have been robbed off them, so uh, maybe they're just parts motors, but we'll see. They're both identical. Maybe get enough parts off each one of them to make one. But for now, and that looks like what happened. It looks like, because of different color, it looks like some parts have been robbed off one of them and put on the other one. I got uh, well, at least two more over there in the in the pickup. But like I said, this one uh, looked like it had the least amount done to it. So let me uh, see. I put some WD-40 in it to get it to spin over. So what I want to find out now is if it has spark. Because if it has spark, then it's just carburation. And carburation we can deal with fairly easy, so. <laughs> but that's uh, what's going on here in the fishing world of East Grand Woodsman. I need a motor that runs decent, but I don't have a dollar in it. Because what I do with some motors is I leave them in the woods, along with a boat, and that's what my plan is with this one. I, I do take and chain it to a tree, uh, but that's about it. If I get a good, you know, that's all I want. I want something that'll run. I can get to that boat, put the motor on it, and then run up the swamp with it. So I don't want a motor that I've got a lot of money into, so that's why I like dealing with these older motors. All it needs to do is run and run steady. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I did play with my original four horse the other day. Uh, that one's got plenty of spark and she fires up, so I've still got to clean the carburetor. But we will have that one. But I don't really want to leave that one in the woods because that's my backup motor uh, to, on my regular boat. So we will see how it goes. <laughs> Well, we're making progress. <laughs> I've got spark in one cylinder, and I don't have spark in the other cylinder. So, we know there's an issue. <laughs> so now we need to pull off the flywheel, 
get in there and uh, see if the points need cleaning or adjusting. Uh, if that's the case, like I said, I got two more motors over there for parts. And we can order parts online for these old motors. I have found those. So but let's pull it apart and uh, see if it's just a simple fix of getting spark down there. Hopefully it'll be something simple that we can uh, figure out. Because the other one, the, the spark I do have is really good. Really good and really strong. So... I will see if I can get that off. You know, I don't really have all the tools needed for these kind of jobs. And pulling that wheel is a bit of a tricky one. And I do have a pulley for pulling, but it's not here. <laughs> it's up at the rustic log cabin. So I'm going to dig a little deeper. If you've never been in here, you got coils, you've got uh, <laughs> points, condes condenser, and, po and coils. Is check the points. Try and figure out which one of these coils give those a little bit of a cleaning and just see if that'll if that'll help me. And what I've done. So I have to be able to turn this motor over somehow so I can check the points. So I'm putting the nut back on it. And then that allows me to turn the motor without a starter. Once the nut gets down there and fetches up. They're both opening. The coils look good. What I'm going to do is I am going to clean those, put it back together, and see if we got spark. First thing I'm going to do is check the points for a gap. I have an old Johnson book from 1975 
I don't exactly know the year of this motor yet. Still trying to figure it out. But I am going to uh, go with the old measurements because I think it'll be the same anyways. So if you don't know what feeler gauges are, that's feeler gauges. They're all numbered. So you get in there and you look for feeler gauges are all numbered. So the one I'm looking for is 22. You can use these for spark plugs, setting the gap on spark plugs. And there is 0 .002. So you turn this motor clockwise. Always turn it clockwise because if you turn it counterclockwise it'll make the water pump down in the shaft run backwards and you could damage it. So then you stick this, open it up as far as it'll go, put your feeler gauge in there, and 20 is really tight. Well actually I get, it was, the book said between 20 and 22. So I'm going to try, 22 is really tight, so I'm going to try 20. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. So this side right here. Yeah, that's perfect. That's set for twenty twenty thousandths. So now I'm gonna turn this motor again till this side opens up. And this side doesn't open up. Enough. And it's got crap in there. So, I'm going to take a guess and we will try to adjust that one. Wouldn't that be nice if that's how simple it was? <laughs> So we're going to turn this around again, make sure it doesn't open up. It's got some crap in there. It's got some crap and it's kind of tight. Got some crap in there and it's kind of tight. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to get this out of my way. That right there is a condenser not hard to change if it turns out usually when you change points you change the points and the condensers all at the same time so just right now I'm just loosening this so there's an adjustment screw right here that I could turn and that will open it up still a little tight Okay, so now I'm going to tighten everything down, put it back together, and see if that
Put these back on. There's a keyway in there. You line up that keyway. You line up the keyway and she's good to go. making it a little bit tight for now. All we're doing right now is checking. We know this one had spark. So now we're going to check this one. The bottom one didn't have spark. So let's see if we got spark now. If it will spark, I can make it run. Test it for spark by putting spark plug in it, pushing it up against the metal, and pulling the motor over. Still no spark. No spark on that one now. <laughs> now we got no spark anywhere. So maybe we adjusted the wrong point. No, sir. <laughs> got to go back in and undo what I did. All right. It just came back. I robbed the points and condenser off another motor. So let's put these in and see if it'll work. All right, I've got spark back to the cylinder I had it. So now we're gonna, I adjusted the other side tighter. So now let's see if we got spark on this one. If we do, then we're setting pretty good. No spark. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, like I said, I robbed this off another motor. I'm going to go in and change this out. Put this in and I'm also going to put this condenser in. If that doesn't work, then I will go rob the uh, not, not solenoid, the, uh, whatever. I'll think of it in a minute. I need it to roll off my tongue. Coil. I'll go in and rob the coil off that other one. As well as check where the wire goes from the spark plug to the coil to make sure it's got good contact. All this stuff just kind of pushes in. So we got spark back to one, so we're back to square one. What I'm going to do first, because it's not that hard to check, I'm going to change out the condenser first condenser is right here. There's only two screws that hold it in. So we're going to take that out. And put in this other condenser. And then see if we got spark.
And if we don't, as a condenser I'm taking out, is a condenser I'm putting in. I could use smaller fingers. Okay. Put it back together and see if she's got spark. With the new condenser. No spark. Plenty of spark still on that one. <laughs> so we're not backing up. So now I'm going to remove this point. This side. Put in another spear that I have. Oh, I've taken out center screw, I've taken out the little clip. Now we just gotta free it up here. Make sure that's good. Take it off that. I guess I'll get this out of here. Now if this will work afterwards, then I will probably see if I can't locate, shoot, see if I can't locate a set of points. There's the point, so when I robbed off the, well actually I took them off this side, because that side I had spark on, and the other set I took from the, I'm 
hoping this will all work. Alrighty, so now we've got the other set of points in, we just got to hook them all together. Wee little clip that I almost dropped and lost. <laughs> Gotta get that thing shoved on there without losing it. Yeah, that's what holds the points in place. Well, <laughs> now we've got new points. <laughs> new condensers. At least robbed off that other motor. <laughs> Hopefully, the coils look good, so I don't think there's anything wrong with the coils. Trial and error, it's an old motor. Once you get spark, then it's all carburation from there. Usually, unless you've gone in, messed up the timing and stuff like that. So, I think, can I get that tight in there?
Yes, I did. Yes! Lots of spark! Check the other one. Yes, lots of spark. <laughs> now we've gained. Both cylinders have got spark. Sweet. So now we'll put everything back together. Then we'll put some gasoline in the spark plug holes. And see if it'll fire up. And then if it fires up, then we pull the carburetor off it and give the carburetor a good cleaning. Motor with spark will run. Sweet, 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 sweet. Hear that? She fired! Well, that means it fires, that means it will run. So now it's just a matter of going in and taking the pot to carburetor and giving it a good cleaning. I will give it one more run like that. And uh, what I'm doing is putting gas down the spark plug hole and that's how you find out if she's going to run. This motor is going to run. Here we are, a few hours later, I'm not exactly sure how long, get yourself a cup of coffee. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> if you follow this video, uh, actually we even had one out last week on the 74 Evan Road. Well, I got a chance to work on the Evinrude, I got a chance to work on these other two motors, and then I've got a 1974 Johnson in the shop that needs to have the carburetor cleaned on it. It's one I've used for 25 years. But anyways, uh, from what I know about the Evinrude, it needs a set of points. These two motors here, I actually had three of those motors given to me. Over there is the fourth one. I mean the third one, 
and it's basically it looks like a parts motor. I've been robbing parts off it all day. And I will save the rest of the parts that I robbed off it. Basically I went into the motor, pulled the flywheel off, and pulled out the uh, points that was on it. And each one of these motors needed one set of points. So I and I paid attention to each cylinder had a working had a working set of points. So all I did was pay attention to which one of those, figured out which one of those was the working set of points, left it in, and then off that spare motor, I took the points off, and each one of them motors I was able to get spark on both cylinders. And you saw once that I put some gasoline in the spark plugs holes and then the motor fired right up so that's that just narrows it down to now it's either probably just carburation but now I didn't try these motors with a fuel tank attached to them so they might start right up who knows with each cylinder with each motor needing a set of points that could have been why it got shelved, because it wouldn't run, and it wouldn't run without that extra set of points in there, so, hey, who knows? Uh, we'll start them up, we'll run them, we'll see how they run, if they run, if they don't run, then I will take the carburetors off, order some carburetor kits for them, and then uh, put, put, them, put them together and get them going. What I need is motors setting out in the woods. I'm going to put a boat over at Beaver Creek. So I want that boat over there. And then with the boat, I want a motor. I don't want to have to truck a motor back and forth during hunting season or trapping season or, or if it's bait fishing, whatever. Whatever the boat needs over there. And then maybe in the winter, I'll get it and haul it back. Maybe I might just leave it there. Wrap it up in plastic and uh, hang it up in a tree and, and leave it right there. Who knows? We'll see. I've done that before. done that lots of times. So we'll see. Starters work. They fire it up. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> so. I'm anxious now to get some points for this one. Only because it's a nice looking motor. A lot cleaner than these other old two. I am pretty sure, but not a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure this motor right here was my grandfather's motor. It's a six hoss Johnson. And that one there is a five hoss, that's a four hoss, so Either way, they'll make great motors for buzzing around the swamp. So you guys have a great day. Thanks for coming along for playing with outboards, I guess. Once I get a fuel tank down here, that might even be Saturday. I might uh, fire them up with a, with, a fuel, with a fuel tank. See that? See if I can get them running with a fuel and that would be pretty sweet. Because this old boat down back, I want to put in the swamp. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll see you later.